Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Giving assistance to people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. In this recording titled, Gladys Leonard asks about developing mediums on earth, Mary channels Gladys, who claims she is in the fifth sphere and is the spokesperson for a group of spirits who on earth were either mediums, interested persons, or skeptics about spirit communication, and she asks Jesus for advice about assisting positive and loving development of mediums still living on earth. Recorded on the 25th of September 2018 from 11am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Session 1 Well, welcome everyone again. Uh, Myself and Mary are here. Hello, darling. How are you? We've decided to do a little bit of mediumship again today, but before we do this mediumship, we'd like to give a little bit of background. During the late uh, 1800s and early 1900s, it was a very interesting time for mediumship on the planet. A lot of people were investigating mediumship, and, and during that phase of development, there were a lot of people who were scientifically interested in the process as well as religiously interested in the process. And during that phase as well, um, there, there was also a tolerance, a certain amount of tolerance by religious, by religious organisations for mediumship as well. So it was a very interesting time on Earth, and as a result, many people on Earth were investigating mediumship as they worked through and, and, and worked through their investigation of mediumship. And of course, many people on Earth were openly mediumistic, and that helped greatly with regard to that investigation. Unfortunately, over the late after the 1930s in particular, this uh, started to drop off more in, uh, and, and, uh, and the world became a lot more materialistically inclined. And as a result of that, um, most of the mediumship gains that were made during the late 1800s and 19, early 1900s were sort of lost to the planet to a large degree. And now a lot of mediumship is primarily of an entertainment type of mediumship rather than an educational type of mediumship. Now, uh, myself and Mary, Mary found this book online. Uh, 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 there are many old books that you can find online uh, from hundreds of years ago sometimes, uh, up, to, uh, up to sort of 70 or 80 years ago, where mediums have described some of their experiences. And, and, and one of those books is like Dr. Carl Wickland's book, where he, his doc, he was a doctor and his wife was a medium, and they used to try to help people with their medical problems. And then there's other books that, uh, that we've already talked about a bit, including the Paget Messages mm-hmm. that happened during that phase of, of time. And this particular book was a, is, a, is a book from which we've printed out. We've only got a printed copy. It's a book by Gladys Leonard, who was a lady who was born in the late 1800s and she died in, the, in about 1960, I understand. Uh, somewhere in the 60s. Somewhere in the 60s. Like and um, she was a, a, a developing medium over that period of time as, t- uh, uh, as well. And, and she's been, uh, as we've been reading her book, obviously, she's been around us occasionally and, and, and barging in on Mary's thoughts <laughs> quite a lot. So, uh, okay. and, and she has a group of spirits with her as well. And uh, as a result, we'd like to have, uh, she would like to have a chat with us, obviously, about different things regarding mediumship and what's happening on Earth and so forth. We don't know the full content of the discussion at this stage. And so what we're going to do is have the discussion with her and with Gladys and, uh, because she is the spokesman of the group. So hopefully we'll, uh, we'll learn something through that process and we'll see how we go. Thanks, darling. <laughs> Hello. G'day Gladys, how are you? <laughs> Very happy to be here. <laughs> I feel almost as if I'm... <laughs> uh, on, in, a, in a celebrity situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't think anyone on earth would agree with you at this stage. <laughs> it's been quite a novelty and a pleasure to have you uh, both start to read my book. Uh, I, I confess to having a hand in, uh, in influencing Mary to find the book. Yes. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's really because I'm here with a large group of spirits and we have, uh, a very particular purpose in mind and 
uh, we've been wanting to share this, uh, this mission of ours uh, with people on Earth. So perhaps, uh, that is, we could start with what the mission is. Can we do that? Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. Uh, so, as you just alluded to uh, in your introduction, uh, I consider myself very fortunate to have lived in what I like to refer to as one of the summers of spiritualism on a, a period on the earth where uh, people were open and curious. Yeah, you could say a golden age of mediumship, <laughs> shall we yes, call it. <laughs> yes, uh, indeed. And I, I've always been so interested in, um, in the afterlife, I suppose, and, mm. and I found my entry here quite seamless because of, because of that. And I suppose what we would very much like to have happen is to have people on earth again prepare themselves to receive a great number of messages from here in the spirit world. Uh, we feel, well, we notice, we notice that there is very little mediumship being completed on earth today from those of us who are already here entered into the spirit life. There's very little discussion about what the spirit life is and the potentials for for life after death. Most mediums on the earth today channel almost exclusively earthbound spirits. And we here, and I should introduce the group of us, because we are quite a collective. There are thousands of us who all have come together because we share this common goal that people on earth should begin to take up mediumship again in the way that brings about evidence of the spirit life. Many of us were involved uh, during that uh, summer that I referred to uh, in investigating. Some were cynics and tried to debunk. Even some of my, my so-called debunkers <laughs> have joined me now as they have seen evidence obviously through their lived experience that life continues on and that it is possible to communicate with people on earth. Yeah, so the, this obviously this has been going on for many centuries, hasn't it? The, the attempt to try to improve, and, and in fact many millennia, the attempt to try to improve the earth condition through m messages given by people who have obviously learned some things that we haven't yet really collectively learnt on earth. It's, it's an almost a seemingly eternal quest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it is. And it's a lovely gift that God's given, this, uh, this ability to communicate through, you know, over a period of space, which, uh, which obviously um, is something that God included as a gift in order to educate humanity so that we're not left to our own educational devices of experimentation on earth with no other way of finding out truth. So... It, it's truly love. It's mm. truly love mm. to have the capacity to be guided from one who sees, or, or many who see more than you do at any time. And, and also this element of faith. I, I mean, we see on earth today there is a large level of, of faithlessness in, in anything good or anything eternal in terms of um, justice or love or uh, any sense that there is, um, well, really a point. Mm, to life. Mm. Mm. If we can maybe just begin with a few questions for you, mm -hmm. um, just to give a bit of background to our people who are listening. When did you pass? What was the period of time you passed? In the 1960s. Yes. Yes. So you would have passed at the time I arrived here, <laughs> a similar time to when we uh, yes. arrived. Yes, yes, in fact, but in fact, almost the same year. Right, yeah, I was born in 63 and was incarnated in 62, so, yeah. So um, you, you obviously lived quite a long life. I did. But I noticed through the reading of your book, you had quite a few, uh, what I would classify as quite severe physical uh, complaints during mm. your life mm. and so we might just get to discuss that a little bit um, 
yeah, over the over the discussion we have together as well. Sure. But um, I would like to ask firstly, though, where where like where are you now in the spirit world? Well, I enjoy I enjoy life in what you would probably call the fifth sphere. Yep. Mm. Yep. And have you started with your experimentation with your relationship with God, or? Yes, yep. yes, I have, yep. I have, and I watch with great interest uh, your sessions, and I learn. I'm learning. I'm a student of yours. Before, before you learnt about that, how, how had you been progressing in the spirit world? Well, really, in the sense of what you would call a natural love sense. Mm-hmm. I, I do feel it was a, a loving progression. Mm-hmm. I entered the spirit life, as I said, directly and didn't tarry on the earth plane. So you didn't become an earthbound spirit uh, in, influencing other people on earth? No. No. No, I did not. And uh, I, it, once, I, once I arrived, I proceeded to, um, to seek answers uh, to some of the questions that I had had. Uh, but I found myself it, within a group of people who believe in the existence of God, but from what I now understand, were not connecting directly with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so we believed in uh, the goodness uh, of God and the really the goodness of humankind, the potential goodness of humankind. And, and I have remained very interested in the... Uh, the potentials for mediumistic communication with the earth. And mm. so a lot of my progress has really been in um, service to others on earth attempting to to develop those skills and, and learning as I go, obviously, various lessons of love. But it's, it's only been a recent thing that I've really begun to undertake this... Uh, well, this far more uh, emotional connection with God and with self and with others even, Mm -hmm. really only in the last two to three years of Mm -hmm. your time. And uh, that has been quite, well, (laughs) quite shocking in many many ways. Uh, But we are very interested in, in really beginning to establish mediumistic communication in harmony with these principles of God's way that you are teaching. This is something that we all feel we are students of Mm. yet. Uh, All of us share a very similar background to myself in that we've had a fascination or uh, preoccupation with understanding uh, the meaning of life and and especially in relation to channeling and spiritual matters while we were on the earth and uh, progressed in a similar way to myself after passing, but have really uh, neglected perhaps deep personal introspection and deep uh, emotional, um, I'm not really quite sure how to put it. As I said, I feel I'm still very much a an early student of this way that you were teaching. And, and yes, and we, we, well, really, we want to guide mediums on earth. And we, I suppose we have very clear ideas about how um, mediums can establish their abilities. But really, as I'm speaking with you now, I'm feeling quite prompted to, uh, to really question and, and seek your guidance as well about how does one achieve connection with people on earth from the spirit life in harmony with God's way? And also, how does one coach and counsel a person on earth to establish a connection with spirits in a way that is not detrimental to their progression with God? Well, perhaps if you can keep those questions in your mind so that we can, you can remind, them again, remind me of them again later in the conversation and we will certainly try to answer those questions. But um, I just wanted a little bit more background with regard to the group and, and yourself, yes. if we can, because um, I think a lot of people have the impression, and particularly a lot of mediums on earth have the impression, that, when, that they sort of know a lot about spirit world and progression 
uh, before they pass. Mm -hmm. and, and I wondered how you felt about that particular issue, whether you believed that you knew a lot uh, before you passed on Earth and that your passing would be quite gentle. And not so much whether it's gentle or not, but more like, did you find yourself also um, with a lot of things that you didn't really understand um, because you had some predisposed belief systems while you were learning your mediumship craft on Earth? Certainly, I'll take my time to answer that because there is quite a bit to say. Firstly, I should say that yes, I do feel that I had developed uh, quite some arrogance in my life on Earth in relation to what I perceived to be a good understanding of the spirit life. My visions of uh, these wonderful places had granted me a sort of assurance that, uh, well, a, a sense really that that, that that was all that existed in the spirit life, um, or, or especially for myself, mm. <laughs> that I would enter somewhere very beautiful and harmonious. And while I didn't enter somewhere very dreadful, uh, I did have much to learn about the various landscapes, if you will, uh, physically, really, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. about the, it, that exist here. So um, did you arrive in the first sphere of the spirit world or which sphere of the spirit world now when you look back did you see yourself arriving? Looking back, it was really in the, the early parts of the second sphere, mm -hmm. I would estimate it to be, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, and is that the same for the majority of the people in your group? I'm just taking a survey. No worries. <laughs> <laughs> yes, largely so. Uh, we are, uh, I did not know, uh, one of our professors here, he was uh, more, closer to the third. Um, mm. And then others in this sort of uh, mid to high range of the first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. So none of you but, passed into a terribly dark condition as a, no. as a result? No. No. Yeah. And so, yes, so going back to your question, mm -hmm. what strikes me, I suppose, is this, is that most mediums, oh, well, in fact, most people, their experience after death is often very governed by their belief system. Mm -hmm. This is something that I've observed time and again. And so what I see is that those people who had no belief who have no belief in the afterlife, very often become earthbound spirits because they're really still engaged. They wish to be engaged in the earth life. That is how they feel themselves. And, and uh, often they deny their own passing for quite some time. But even those who have some awareness of some change feel very uh, frightened really to to leave the earthbound state because they believe just as they believed when they were in their physical body that nothing exists beyond that plane and this is a trouble that we often encounter when attempting to assist spirits in mm. that place mm -hmm. and and then there are others similar to myself who had a strong belief and faith in the existence of an afterlife but with some quite definite um beliefs that uh, for example i didn't have a sense of the um the incredible capacity for growth and change that is possible here and really the the ability for the person to choose their own way of progression i suppose is the best way to say it so for example if we contrast uh, what we were just speaking of about me now coming to understand in these recent times that there is this way to do things that is far more emotionally engaged and uh, really the existence of myself as a soul. I really, I really saw my spirit body as my soul mm -hmm. up until very recently. And so these beliefs, which I had already established on earth, governed really what occurred to me after I passed. Um, so do you see what I mean? I'm mm. not really there. I, I understood that condition would affect passing in that 
um, if one was in not a very good condition, as you would call it, they would, they would encounter troubles and problems after passing that reflected that. Uh, but I, I didn't, I, I suppose I didn't really see until I made this uh, transition myself, and even I'm still learning, how much the beliefs that one establishes within oneself when on earth really dictate uh, what occurs after passing. I suppose I believed that really this higher power um, would compel us uh, in terms of change in belief. But uh, I've come to understand that one cannot really be compelled to change beliefs. Uh, one must develop that curiosity or openness within oneself. Certainly there are, as I mentioned, the workings of the, the world which cause a person who has a, what I would deem a, a poor spiritual condition to have to face some consequences. But that is, and, and perhaps those workings do work towards us changing our beliefs, but it, it must still be an internal change. Uh, something driven by oneself. Yeah, um, I was thinking with regard to the issue of change um, that uh, as you now would, would see that, that change really, in a, once you get into a relatively happy place, and, and because many of you would have arrived in the spirit world already in a relatively happy place, mm. um, change is sort of not... Um, if, if you haven't engaged this desire to change on earth, then, then what you need to learn in the spirit world is to develop a desire to change, don't you? Yeah. And that must have taken you some time, I gather, from, from, for the group and from people in the group to develop, firstly, the desire to change even in the natural love way, but then also then to make that uh, transition from desire to change using that way to, to change using God's way. There, there also has to be shifts in the nature and the desires of the individual there as well, doesn't there? Yes, and, and it's the nature of humility, isn't it? To, to develop humility uh, mm. is it. And, and I should say that so something that is in common to everyone here is that we would have considered ourselves seekers on earth. And, and really rebels in many cases or, or people who, who weren't afraid to challenge certain uh, belief systems. Uh, when I say, yes, it's mm. society, I suppose. Yes, because obviously you were also, most of you probably lived in Christian society, did yes. you? And so, you know, there was obviously a fairly large uh, imperative by Christian belief systems to, to not engage in mediumship or channeling. And we were often the object of scrutiny and scorn and, and well, and even those here amongst us who were the scrutinizers, <laughs> <laughs> they, they were also seekers and uh, willing to investigate things that many of their peers thought was a waste of time. So I should say that um, we weren't rigid people, if, mm. if you like, mm. and um, and I, I guess I point this out really for the benefit of your listeners because many of us on earth feel like, well, we're pretty open and, well, we're, we're willing to, to look beyond and actually we're far more awake than most other people. But that is really, that can be a, a way to hide quite a deep amount of arrogance and there are still beliefs that reside within the individual that are not being challenged, mm. that are already set. And so it, most of my beliefs were, um, were really set in my childhood. And uh, while I sought out my own development and changes when it came to spiritualism, my faith in the capacity for goodness was set. Uh, and even really my early mediumistic experiences were only just further developed throughout my life and they had occurred in childhood also. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that 
so very little change occurs in most people beyond a certain point in their life. And what I noticed for myself in reflection is that while I had some periods of change and growth, and certainly in my childhood there was a lot of development happening, as soon as that change and growth ceases, it's almost as if my arrogance upon those matters began to grow. These are all things that have then been really, I would say up until recently, being gradually challenged within myself and I've had a growing awareness of these things I'm explaining in the years since I've passed. Yes, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, this whole process on Earth where we go through that early developmental phase where we do change. But again, a lot of it's due to just just the physical things that are imposed upon us by God's way of designing the, the, the human body and so forth, isn't it? A lot yes. of change. Yeah. And, and then we get to a stage of what we call adulthood. And most people at that stage believes that, believe that change is now almost complete, um, mm -hmm. aside from a, maybe a few emotional changes that might occur thereafter. And, and yet, from God's perspective, it's only just beginning. And, that, and that's an interesting uh, concept in, when you compare the spirit world design, if you like, and this whole concept on Earth, which, which is the Earth is still designed for change, of course, but because society generally opposes it so, so vigorously, it makes it very, very difficult to continue to desire to change while you're on Earth. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. And, and I really just, one establishes a sort of a routine for life mm. uh, with certain people and certain beliefs and certain habits and, and really lives out their life according to those things. That's the majority of how people live on earth. And it is quite a contrast. And so while I was open to this spirit life and, and really interested, yeah. <laughs> there's been much to come to understand about beliefs yeah. and, and the necessity to, to go into the deepest parts of oneself and examine belief. So, so you have mentioned uh, in this conversation so far that you, you know, this attempt to try to educate more mediums, I suppose you could call it, in a way of developing uh, so that they could... Uh, you know, transmit more information to the earth than they're currently capable of doing. Mm -hmm. And um, my question for you is during the period from your passing to, you know, a few years ago, how difficult or easy did you find that process of trying to educate uh, some mediums you obviously selected on earth? And um, what kind of frustrations have you had during that process? Well, I mean, obviously, we are able to have some influence. We are, we've been able to illuminate to people, if you will, the fact that they have mediumistic talent, mm -hmm. for example. And we can guide them through uh, giving them thoughts and certain feelings or ideas towards even just reading a book uh, or finding a resource or a, or a video or, or something that will sort of awaken the idea within them and various sort of signs if you like where we uh, cause the person to to notice things and to we give them a, a feeling or a thought at the, that very same moment and so they understand oh there's significance to this mm -hmm. oh, oh someone's trying to tell me something and so these are very uh, what i would call rudimentary things that Spirits, uh, whether they're earthbound or here in the spirit life, are doing with pretty much every person on earth. <laughs> all of the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so we have had some success in terms of waking people up, if you like, to the mm -hmm. fact that, um, that they themselves could be mediums. Yes. Uh, and some people, as you know, are naturally more open to this, to... to receiving our thoughts and feelings and ideas and that comes from a variety of factors which we've studied a little also uh, to do with um, various things that they have been allowed to develop or not been restricted from experiencing in childhood and very often it does run in families because there is that same allowance or lack of restriction 
that goes through families. Uh, if does that make sense? So, yes. Certainly, it does to me. I'm not sure we're there. <laughs> Listeners will understand the full import of that because it, you know, many people, even though they hear us talking about this multi generational, if you like, emotional condition that gets passed down from generation to generation don't really understand a lot of times the full impact of that on the person's life. But once you're in the spirit world, obviously it's something you see happening all the time, isn't it? It's fascinating. Mm. It's fascinating. Mm. So so really our focus um, until recently has been let's just uh, wake up as many mediums <laughs> as we can yep. because we desperately want to have some... We want people to have a conscious awareness that they are receiving messages because people are unconsciously receiving messages and being influenced and being given ideas continually. And quite often they're crediting those ideas and concepts to themselves. To themselves. <laughs> and their own thought process. That's right. And, and a lot of creation and destruction is happening on the planet at the moment as a result of mm. those kinds of influences, the mm. unconscious influence, if I call it that. Yeah. The power and beauty of conscious influence or conscious communication is that obviously um, there's far more capacity to convey far more complex and really different types of, of information because the person becomes aware that it's not just themselves and also that they are communicating with another individual who, and much like you have a conversation on earth, mm. these, these factors start to, to come into play and that's of great benefit. So we have been able to guide certain individuals in terms of waking up to, the, to this possibility as a reality. And we usually do in those early phases of doing that, we do try to give them a multitude of what I would call the signs to, to help reinforce to them that this is a real thing that is happening for mm. them and that really people do exist beyond their death. Often, though, there starts then, the condition of the person involved starts mm. to play a role. And interfere, really, in a lot of ways, doesn't it? Interfere. So, yeah. so for some people, they feel then that they... Um, that they themselves have special powers <laughs> yep. or that they are psychic or that they are reincarnated yep. um, or that they are a, a wizard or a goddess <laughs> or a witch or a, and, you know. And so it goes on. Yeah. It? It's, just, it's just this terrible thing that starts happening, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. When really there's so much simplicity in what is occurring. Exactly. It's, it's, it's such a simple thing. But, but such is the nature of the world there is so much confusion and so many ideas, which is why we so desperately want to start this communication. So, and do, the so other... can I just say, have you found then during this phase that the basically the emotional, there's two primary influences, that there's the first, the, there's the belief influences that yes. you're trying to overcome in the person. Mm -hmm. But there's also this other factor, which is sometimes even worse <laughs> in a lot of ways, and that is the 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 underlying emotional condition of the person regarding how they see themselves seems to have a huge impact, yes. doesn't it, on, yes. on whether they're capable of maintaining continual development when it comes to their mediumship. Certainly. Yeah. Certainly. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is why if we examine the earth today, there are some very competent mediums who are actually channeling real people and and, to, and providing to some degree faith in the continued existence of, the, the, of, of life, as in that there is no death. But most of these people are channeling simply those people who have passed and are still really very close and inhabiting the earth plane. So they've woken up, if you like. I'm not sure how I came to start suddenly using that term, but <laughs> there it is. Uh, <laughs> they're woken up, uh, but then... Their, their condition dictates that they, and that they uh, are now just doing the easy work what we, is what we call it because they're really talking with people who are very similar to themselves in condition but finding that they are getting a lot of recognition for this. Exactly. And that then it, then it very much depends on the person's own 
well, pre-existing condition and their integrity. Yeah. Um, their level of ethics, sincerity and morality now it, dictates quite yes. severely, doesn't it? The, yes. Con- Sin- the continual discussion of better development when it comes to the mediumship. That's right. Mm. That's right. Mm. And many mediums really, part of the way that they are sort of open is that they are not necessarily deeply introspective people. They they are just quite oftentimes open they're more folks. worried about other people, aren't they? Yes, and, and other people's feelings. Sensitive to and other sensitive people's to feelings, other people's feelings, which is what, as you know, that's a wonderful quality. Well, uh, that's what allows them to do some of the mediumship, isn't it? Indeed, <laughs> so, indeed. Yeah. And and yes, and so it's a bit of a tricky business. We are able to to usually convey messages about how a medium can care for themselves in a physical sense, for example. And to avoid certain um, bad associations, mm-hmm. uh, some mediums are in in the condition where we can we can dictate to them like this person is is not that good f- for you, mm-hmm. or don't follow that track because <laughs> that's going to lead that's you. That's going to go down the track, down <laughs> yeah. the hill. That one. <laughs> yes. And uh, you know, look after your physical body mm-hmm. and uh, don't abuse substances uh, uh, or even activities but as you will see as you may have observed many successful if, if you would like mediums are, are really almost entirely engrossed just in mediumship and this is also problematic because then one ends up in a, in a situation uh, well similar to myself where one is ready for passing and and finds that not to be such a trauma and Due to the nature of the extensive service given to other people through the mediumship, one passes in not such a terrible condition. Mm. And even the fact that one has been so engrossed and focused on this one thing meant that there wasn't many other, you know, terribly sinful paths that were followed. And so one enters in in a fairly reasonable state, but one's neglected really that deep introspection and, yeah. and the, the, the thoughts on beliefs. And so I suppose this is where I, I come back to that question we were asking earlier is really how does one do it? Well, before I answer the, those questions, can we have one more discussion about just this whole concept of the, the way on earth, of, uh, as you said, this whole thing happens with regard to mediums. And uh, I'd just like to talk a little bit with you first about what you see the potential being compared with what is actually happening with regard to mediumship. And this is where I get so excited (laughs) because really, imagine, imagine what we could do. At the moment, uh, yes, there is some rudimentary, uh, what I would call rudimentary, which is not to mm. diminish its importance, but... No, because ev- it does establish the basics, basic of faith, doesn't it, in yes. the whole spirit world concept, yeah. Yes, mm. indeed. And, and this, I mean, oh, that's wonderful in itself. Yeah. yeah, But really, imagine the potential if, if for example, myself, I, I have spent these years, and while it's not been a long time here in, here in the spirit life, uh, following a, a sort of a natural uh, path, a natural love path. Imagine uh, the capacity if I could channel another book <laughs> from here mm-hmm. in the spirit life, which describes my progress in the natural way and then my discovery of this other way mm. that I'm now interested in. Imagine the potential, imagine the inspiration for people on the earth to then begin to follow that way Mm. and to see the implications it's almost that i would like to serialize it so (laughs) that i could come back each time and and share just how my experience is changing by making these other spiritual changes Mm. these other emotional changes these changes in relating now directly with god yeah Uh, and there are examples aren't there of those kind of books on earth Again, in that golden age of mediumship, it's, this, uh, it's like, you know, with the, with the Robert James Lee's series of books that, you know, we read frequently and, and also like Jane Sherwood even, you know, with a bit of channeling there that she did with regard to passing of, uh, of what was it, uh, Lawrence uh, of Arabia? Yes. Yeah, uh, I forget his name now, but 
And, you know, these kind of books do go through some, some discussion about the progress of the spirit, don't they? But, yes, and this is why I made reference to that at the mm, beginning of our discussion, because mm. really we're gathered together because we wish to prepare people for a new summer, mm. a new age where we feel, and I feel so passionate about it now because I feel that there is the potential for, for us to share beyond, beyond what we shared in that previous age, mm. in what spirit, because there is this sort of, I want to call it a quickening, and, and I don't know if that is the truth, but it feels to me a quickening of this. Since I've made this shift onto this new path, I feel that there's there's an urgent need that I, I desperately want uh, people h here on the earth plane to come to understand these truths far more rapidly and so mm. that they may uh, experience it. We do not yet know the potentials of what it is for individuals to live this way on earth, mm. full of faith, full of making these changes and these direct relationship with God starting on earth it was inconceivable to me really mm -hmm. that such a thing might be possible but now we we desperately want to be able to prepare mediums to convey our life stories and mm -hmm. to convey truths about how the system here operates so that so many may benefit yeah there's, of course, also the a deep amount of scientific knowledge, isn't there, that, and mathematical knowledge that's available for many spirits on, in the spirit world as well. And there's a large degree of frustration there as well about the transmission of that kind of information, which would benefit Earth. Yes, mm. and this information would benefit the Earth immensely. Also at this time, mm. there are many crises happening around the Earth, uh, which science and... Uh, mathematics could alleviate mm. immediately but i suppose our group we see us we we are aware of many groups of spirits who yeah. are wishing to convey that those truths to help alleviate the suffering that's already on the earth our our band here together is very heavily focused on how can we serve by by serving mediums and channels who are on the earth at this time to, to reach a space of development where these scientists and, and many other people can convey those messages mm. easily. So our mission is very specific. Mm. How do we work with these people to bring them into the condition of readiness for all that needs to be shared? Yeah, well, I suppose the reason why I've asked you these questions up to now is because I, want, I wanted to probably illustrate to our listeners the difficulties that a spirit or groups of spirits have in terms of, um, you know, uh, trying to assist a group of people on earth to develop a particular part of themselves that needs to be, be developed before further or more truth can be shared. And in terms of um, I even just demonstrating some of that, uh, you know, I suppose you could call it in some ways, it is frustration, isn't it? Um, of not being able to, to you know, of, of getting a person in the stage where, the, as you say, they waken up to the fact that they are a medium and then getting the person to the point where they're actually hearing spirits and, and transmitting spirit messages and then it all falls apart when... <laughs> and then when it all falls apart when they start, you know, obviously getting some recognition and... Uh, yes. And, it those kind of feelings associated with it. And uh, there were some things I neglected to say there. <coughs> sure. In fact, it is almost like frustration because the person sort of focuses, well, they're caught up in what they're doing then, but in, in that sort of what we would call a limited range mm. of ability. And many of them are quite frightened to learn more it, it, and to examine deeply their beliefs about the afterlife, which is why so many mediums have really confused ideas yes. about what the spirit life really is about. And many of them almost reject their personal investigation when they actually have easy access to us. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's, it's very illogical, isn't it, in a way? Because, it, because it, 
Unfortunately, when they do that too, then you've got the medium who people are now listening to and having some, uh, you know, faith in the scientific uh, reality of their mediumship. Mm -hmm now being listened to with regard to their explanations about belief systems. Mm -hmm. And this, of course, then causes more false belief it systems does. to be transmitted to us rather than less. And that has felt like a frustration. Yeah, yeah. What we commonly see is the person will open up or wake up, um, and sometimes it's not been us who's done that work. Sure, sure. But then very quickly they do become associated with one spirit or a group of spirits who assist them with... Um, providing evidentiary proof to the people that they are serving, mm. but they, they almost sort of get controlling of the medium on earth. Yes. These people in, in And you can see in some ways why, because they, they're, they're afraid of having done all that work only to lose the <laughs> medium to yes. another process. So, some, of them, <laughs> some of them feel very driven to, to just provide evidence mm -hmm. of the spirit life. And so they do get very rigid and try to limit how much further exploration the mm. medium does. Mm. Just trust, just trust this, just trust this, and that's sort of their message. And just and trust us yes. as well, isn't it? There's a very strong feeling of uh, camaraderie but also connection and, as you say, level of control Yes. to trust the people now who have developed you to the point who, that you can now, you know, accurately receive at least some messages. Yeah. Yes, mm. yes. So it becomes a, an association that... It is limiting. And that's really in the best of cases. Sometimes, as you're aware, there's far more negative uh, associations happening with a yes. person's so-called guide. Yeah. There is sometimes a lot of arrogance and really dark motivations and intentions. In the so-called guide. The so-called guide <laughs> yeah. that are causing the medium to, to really serve the ego or serve the selfish desires of the, mm. the, the, the spirit, the person who is assisting them with their capacity uh, to, to channel accurate information. And there is a third um, situation which I, I neglected to speak of as well, which is where often we see that there are certain people who are quite open uh, mediumistically, but because they have a difficult life circumstance, um, or some very defining negative events or situations in their childhood, or negative, negative belief systems instilled in them, what I would call negative, it's a very broad general term, but mm. it will become clearer when I explain what happens, is that we see then people who are, who are lost to substance abuse or lost to what's commonly called mental illness, uh, who, who really find that the spirits are now, they're no longer communicating with these spirits, but a large variety of all kinds of spirits with quite dark intentions are basically taking over the person mm. to varying degrees at varying points in their life. Some people experience that for some brief period in their life. And as I mentioned, spirits are influencing everyone all of the time. Mm. <laughs> But some people who are quite open and who have a very particular set of circumstances and situations and emotions within them are often really, we call them lost. Uh, well, they often become obsessed and possessed, don't they? Yes. Almost entirely by the spirits. And yeah. tormented, really. And tormented, yeah. Whether they're consciously aware or not, they mm -hmm. are tormented. And then there's all, all of these people who believe, you know, on earth that, you know, doing things like having a walk-in or those kind of terminologies of use where a spirit basically takes over the complete yes. life of the individual for the rest of their life. Yes. And these kind of things obviously a very sad result of the person on earth not really understanding what's going on. Very and, sad and, and this, this complete denial or avoidance of self has such detrimental effects. These people are very, almost like a person who has been, um, who has been starved <laughs> physically. This is what the, the, the spirit of the person who allows the walk-in ends up being like when they enter mm. the spirit life. They are wasted, wasted away in terms of their sense of self, in terms of their desire, their aspiration. Mm. They've just 
neglected themselves. And even physically too, obviously, because yes, it, we, there's like so much energy being drawn from the physical body by the spirit in order to maintain that connection as well. So yeah. from a spiritual perspective, uh, walk-ins are seen as this, uh, this wonderful thing and, and while the, the, the original person does remain present to some very small degree, from a spiritual perspective, mm-hmm. they, are, they are basically failing to, to thrive, to develop, to, and so this yeah. has very many detrimental effects when their physical body eventually passes and yeah. the spirit is no longer connected to them. Yeah, it's really a disaster in, in regards to their life, isn't it? It is. Their life experience on earth. It is. And, and again, because there's so much uh, belief systems about, oh, isn't this a special thing that's mm. going on? And things like that. It, it, society or the immediate people who enjoy watching what this person now delivers um, basically support the whole mechanism occurring, and which, which just adds to the problem of the person doing it for many, many years and sometimes for their entire life. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a terrible thing. Yeah. All right. Well, I think perhaps what we need to do is just have a quick break because mm-hmm. both Mary and I need to visit the toilet. And then um, what we'd like to do is talk about how we can help. Uh, f- uh, and we'll look, get a bit of your perspective as well about things about how we can actually assist people who are mediumistic. And as you, as you correctly say in your own book, <laughs> that uh, pretty much everyone in every family to a degree has someone who's a bit more mediumistic than others. And so what we want to do is talk a bit more about um, the entire process of trying to help people who are mediumistic to actually continue developing their skills to a point where more truth can be delivered on earth rather than just what, the, what you would call the evidentiary proof mm-hmm. that, uh, that there is a spirit world. And so what, that's what we'd like to talk about now. Wonderful. <laughs> and Mary and I are continuing our discussion with Gladys, uh, Gladys Leonard, who is the writer of this particular book, Her Personal Experience, which is called My Life in Two Worlds. And uh, Gladys died in 1968 uh, on, from, on Earth, but she lived in, from the late 1800s to 1968, so she's quite aged when she passed. Uh, but she was a medium, most, you know, and practiced mediumship. I suppose you could call it Gladys professionally for, <laughs> for a large portion of your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was my, uh, it was my fascination and yeah. my privilege, really. Yeah. I enjoyed it. And it's how you earned your income as well. Was yes. It? Yeah. 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 And is that the At case for many times. who were with you too? No. Uh, no. 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 I suppose many of them wouldn't. And much of the, I should correct that, much of the mediumship I did was not for pay. Of course, of yeah. course, yeah. When you start getting involved in it, it's like a daily occurrence, isn't it? So <laughs> it's pretty hard to, uh, to get paid for every bit of mediumship you do. <laughs> yes, but also there were many groups that I held and, and mm. various formal mediumship yeah. that, yeah. Uh, that uh, I did not charge anything for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I did give... Um, I did give uh, readings or sittings for people. For yes, pay. yes, yeah. All right, well, now we come to the part of the discussion, as we mentioned, that uh, we want to talk about the development of mediums on Earth, don't we? Yes. And, and that's the thing you're excited about mm-hmm, the most. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, how to go about that uh, process. As you know, um, would, uh, how, how long ago did you come in contact with myself uh, as a spirit? I have not met you as a spirit. No, I mean, I'm, I, what I mean is uh, contact with, you know, the fact that we're on earth and teaching these particular uh, things. Just two to three years of your time. Okay, so, so we're talking probably 2014, around about that, or 2015, was it? Uh, 2014, right uh, at the end of your group that you held. So the assistance groups we held yes. in Moncarol in New yes. South Wales, yeah. Okay, well, um, before then, you, I don't know if you've heard or watched it, but there's been many times mediums, we've come in contact with mediums during our travels, and you would have seen yes. or heard about that. Yeah. And then you would notice it's almost the same cycle that you've, that you've experienced, isn't it, um, with regard to the medium spends a bit of time with us. They develop and get some connection to some spirits uh, who want to share some information on Earth. And then their arrogance and other emotions start building and before you know it, they become either heavily influenced by some dark spirits or 
or, or heavily influenced by their own arrogant condition um, to no longer do it anymore. And, and then they go through this very dark period where they attack us and belittle us and, and so forth, uh, public, usually publicly. And that's been a general cycle though, of pretty much every medium that we've actually met on Earth up to this point, isn't it? So it's, in some ways, it's a similar problem to what you've had, isn't it? Exactly the same kind of problem where you meet the person, you help their abilities develop, and then over a period of time, unfortunately, these other influences, which, which we've identified already in our conversation, start to have a large bearing on, whether, on their ability to yes. continue to channel valid and, and helpful truth. Yes, many of them continue to channel, but it's mm. not in the, not this higher level information that no. uh, we, we're really hoping to. And in fact, many of them have become quite overcloaked by or influenced by darker spirits who yes. are often influencing them to teach completely things that are completely false, unfortunately. So, so it's an interesting process. And also the, Many of the mediums that we have developed on Earth, um, when it comes to doing it for free or doing it by donation, many of them are very challenged by that even as well, aren't they? They, they, they see it as their ability should be honoured and respected and therefore they should be paid for what they do. And as a result of the money issue that often arises in their life, they start to feel that if somebody doesn't honour or respect their ability by giving them the money that they feel they deserve, that uh, it means then that um, they don't really want to perform the task of helping mm. people mm. anymore. And many, uh, I suppose I would add there, there there's a number of reasons why uh, mediums on earth, from my observation, uh, wish to demand money. Sometimes it is because they feel that they have this gift and that is their special role in the society and therefore they should be paid just like a carpenter is paid for their services. Uh, so sometimes it's very simple like that. Sometimes it's because they do feel a sense of superiority and feel that, they, that really they are special amongst many people and therefore should receive money, which is more of an arrogant entitlement. But there is this third thing that happens, as you are aware of. People become very selfish and demanding of those who have some spiritual insight or ability to communicate with those who have passed and True. many of these people have situations in their lives where they become very depleted by giving out so much for so long and so they see it almost as if a, a it's a loving self-protection yes <laughs> exactly if, if you if you up your price then there's yes. less people who are going to demand things of you <laughs> and you you can in a way um create some respite for yourself through having some financial means and, mm -hmm. and putting a limit on how much people can take by setting a time limit. Yeah. And, and I suppose, that, you know, as you know from our lifestyle, Maya and myself, you know, we do everything for free and by donation. And so, so you've, we've experienced a lot of that personally, mm -hmm. obviously, where, you know, where people believe that they can continue to demand more and more and more and more from us without any consideration of our personal welfare or situation. Yes. And that is an issue of self-love, certainly, isn't it? An mm -hmm. issue of how, how you go about loving oneself and caring for oneself. So there are, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of issues here, isn't there, really, uh, out there, uh, regarding the entire process of mediumship and how to improve it. So, so after... Uh, thinking about your own experience and the questions, if we go back to the couple of questions that you had, perhaps if we can ask them one at a time, mm -hmm. and then we reflect upon your own experience and we can reflect upon our experience and, and see, well, what can we actually do to assist this process rather than, rather than it be always get to this point where it's limited? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so really our main interest is how can we help mediums to prepare themselves what things can we counsel them in? Uh, we have a certain number of what we would call natural techniques that mm -hmm. we do um, encourage people towards through developing a sense of the metaphysical or the, the spirit life or spirit body mm -hmm. uh, and, and therefore gaining an awareness of the spirit body of the spirits with, with whom they're communicating. And to also have some kind of purity in the approach to the physical body because 
it is that uh, that is also a medium, the, the physical body for the delivery of the messages and the capacity for the person to have a clear connection between their spiritual body and their physical body is, is equally important. So these are the kind of techniques that we had focused on up until now, as well as the development of certain qualities such as service mm -hmm. to others, sincerity in one's um, motivations. Those kinds of things we see have had an impact upon the, the clarity and also the quality of the information that is able to be uh, transmitted or conveyed. So these are the some of the things that we've focused on in the past in terms of helping a medium to develop. But obviously now we're quite interested in how to help a medium develop in a way that will assist them to receive truth um, about not just the fact that there's a life after death, or life continues after death, but the, the very nature of the spirit life and the spirit world. So that's really the first question. Um, yeah, let, let's, can we focus on that if you can yes. remind me of that second question afterwards. If we, if we um, look at the situation with regard to your own experience and our personal experience as well, you can see that um, all of those things you mentioned, like trying to help the person have a connection with, this, with the spirit world, helping them see, you know, letting them receive visions about what the spirit is, similar to what the spirits did who, who have helped you when you were on earth yeah. to come to. And you've, uh, I just need to ask you a brief question about that. Have you met them now? And, uh, yes, yeah. yes. So, yes. So, yeah. so that would have been lovely, wasn't yes. it? Uh, you yeah. put a face or yeah. names and, and, and personality to the, to the yes. whole experience, which is wonderful. But... Um, what they did with you, if you think about it, no, when you were on Earth, was, was they basically got you to, to, do, uh, to get to the point where you enjoyed your mediumship abilities. They, they helped you through a number of processes uh, from a, in, a, in a spiritual and physical way, but not necessarily an emotional way. That's correct. Yeah. And, and this is where... Uh, so I'm not saying here, here that we should neglect those spiritual and physical methods because... They are all a part, as you know, of being able to clearly communicate truth to people on earth. So, but, but the, the two things that, are, that seem to have the heaviest impact upon the personal growth of the medium are the, per, are the medium's belief systems and the medium's condition in, with, with regard to, in particular with regard to their humility, mm -hmm. their level of humility. And by humility, let's define it as their ability to be able to process through and experience uh, old negative emotions to the point where those negative emotions no longer influence their mediumship. Uh, yes, and what we observe is that many mediums are using mediumship to avoid those exactly. old emotions. Yes. In That's fact, many mediums are connecting to the spirit world because... And, and not connecting with themselves. And they desire desperately to connect to someone else other than themselves, which is the reason sometimes why they're so good at mediumship, so, but so bad at seeing themselves. <laughs> bad at life. <laughs> yeah, bad at life as well, yeah. Okay, so, so you can see that that kind of connection where a person is, is so, uh, let, you say, let me say it as, they're, they're not introspective, they are more trying or attempting to avoid their life and their, and their own experience of it. And in particular, avoid any old emotions attached to their life and their experience of it. Because they are so intent on doing that, you get to a point where, with that kind of an individual where you can only share evidentiary proof of a rudimentary nature to the person if you're a spirit. There's re you really can't go beyond that, can you, because of these other influences. That's right. Mm. It's very limited. But then this really, and without removing us from this topic, but this, this is really what we have observed. But if we contrast that with then what I'm now engaged in, in doing things God's way, which is far more introspective and dealing with a lot of those false beliefs and negative emotions, what we see then is 
there's a tendency for for a person to become completely involved in that process and it's far more difficult to really make a a, a spirit-based connection with them when they're in such a state mm-hmm. or there must be a different way to do it and that's really what we wanted to ask you about mm. well i think firstly when a person is in an emotional state where they are experiencing their own emotions in a in a complete way and in particular, we're, we're talking now about their own painful emotions from their painful emotional experience that they need to release. It is best during that time to let them go through that process of release, obviously, rather than to stop it. And any, the only real help you can give the person is to help them continue doing that until it's finished. Mm, I suppose what we notice is that in order for one to get to that place of emotionally releasing, they must focus on themselves very intently yes. for a period of time. Yes, and, and as a spirit, the way you help them do that is to help them focus on themselves very intently during that time rather than distracting them mm-hmm. from that process. As you know, it is quite easy to drop thoughts into a person's mind as a spirit even when they are going through an emotional process. And, but the problem with that is that it, it, uh, it just distracts the person from their own emotional process and it's their emotional process that's going to open them up further mm-hmm. to development when it comes to being a medium. So, so I, I feel firstly we need to make sure that as a spirit you don't interfere with the times when they are actually getting into their emotional processing <laughs> I see, yes. and working through and rather than becoming panicked about that, um, that you know, you've lost the connection temporarily with them while they're doing that. The, the key thing is to, is to aid them or assist them as much as you're, a, as you're able to complete that process emotionally mm-hmm. for that particular thing that they are going through. Mm-hmm. So that, that to my mind, that's a very important part of the process from a spirit perspective. If you, and, and in my, if you notice how myself and Mary deal with people on earth, it's very, very similar in a way, isn't it? We're trying to encourage a person to get to the stage where they deal with their own emotions about things. And then once they do, we let them be. You know, we don't... They let them go through their process that they need to go through yes. rather than trying to stop that process because you want to, you know, get some work done or mm-hmm. <laughs> something else done. Uh, uh, you know, while a person's in that phase, it's very, very hard for them, of course, to do or think about anything else. Yes. Yep. So, so I think as a spirit, that's the first thing. It's an act of love to go, okay, the person's now going through an emotional experience. We can see through the release of the colours coming out of their spirit body that it, that is an actual experience that they are going through that is real and they need to go through that. And how, what can I do as a spirit now to help them complete that process rather than interfere with that process? So that, that's the first point I feel that we need to make sure that we can just help them through the process because remember that every time you help them through an emotional process from an experienced perspective they release an emotion that potentially would interfere in your future development of them as a medium Mm. so Mm -hmm. so it's in your own it's in the interest of the connection with the person to help them complete that process the, the emotional process, of course, is very much revolving around this concept of humility, isn't it? So there's two things, really, where I, I feel as a spirit you lose the connection with a person. The first area is when the person on earth loses faith. Yes. That, that's a major impediment now, isn't it, to the connection? So if they lose faith in their connection with you or they get angry or frustrated with their connection with you because they don't have any faith in it or they feel they heard some... Uh, you know, information that was false and, and met, misled them uh, and so forth. Mm-hmm. These areas of faith become highly sensitive, don't they, in yes. terms of your connection with them from a spirit perspective to the person on earth. And then the second area is the area of humility uh, is, a, is a big problem. And when I say the area of humility, what I mean now is that they develop certain belief systems within themselves about themselves that now begin to interfere with their ability to, to be able to receive truthful information from the spirit world or from a spirit. 
Yes, they believe that they now understand all there is to know. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah. Or even it could be just quite simple that unless you feed my addiction for fame, I'm not going to channel you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Unless you feed my addiction for power over other people, I'm not going to channel, you know, or whatever. All of these kind of addictions, whether they are monetary or personal with regard to uh, the personals, uh, persons on earth, opinion of themselves, obviously going to heavily influence the mediumship process, aren't they? So, so in the first sense is that once they do get into an emotion of some kind, the key is to help them go through that emotion and complete that process. And you can help them by dropping particular thoughts into their mind about their experience connected to that emotion that they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And that will help them go through and connect to the process in a much more uh, connected and Re and releasing manner mm -hmm. and, and also help them go through it much more rapidly obviously because if if they've not got distractions but rather they're getting more and more information about that particular truth that they're now having to come to face emotionally then that's going to help them connect emotionally to those particular truths quite significantly but when we come to this second phase of faith many times it's during these dark emotional periods that faith wanes, yes, isn't it? As you would see from your own experience of examining different people going through the experience. And this is where um, there are evidentiary proofs that can be offered by the spirit to the person to help them maintain their faith even though they are going through a dark period. So as you know, Mary and I have dark periods emotionally that we have to go through. And the key for us, and, and you would have noticed for myself, the key for me is to keep on maintaining some level of faith about the, uh, the importance and also the uh, benefits of such a process. Mm -hmm. And that helps me continue to go through the particular process itself. And so what I'm suggesting is every, be, as a spirit, the way, another way to help a person with regard to this issue of faith is to give them proofs that help continue to remind them about the faith that they have already built up about the spirit communication process. Now, there's lots of different ways you could do that, isn't there? Through physical things happening, uh, as uh, you know, within God's laws. Uh, there's yes. lots of ways you can do that. We, we're quite, we're actually, we're quite familiar with doing yeah. this. Yes, that's right. So there's lots of ways to do that to encourage the person. The key is to not distract them from that first point we made, mm -hmm. from their emotional release process, by giving the evidence at the wrong time. Do you see what I'm saying? Because that could quite be, tricky. Yes, because it could easily cause them to get off their processing. But when there are critical points with regard to their faith, that's the time to actually give them some evidentiary proof that no, this is the right way to go down the track, isn't it? Isn't it? Mm -hmm. That that's the that. So to my mind, that's the second thing, the, the issue of continuing to attempt to assist them with their faith, to build their faith to the such an extent that even though they are going through emotional processes, that their faith is not severely impacted by that process that they're actually going through. Helping them maintain some faith in what has already occurred and what may potentially occur in the future. Yes, and, and the interesting thing about what's already occurred is it's quite easy to remind them, mm. even when they're going through dark periods. Whereas when it comes to what may occur in the future, that's a bit more difficult because they have to have some level of desire or uh, you know, openness to allowing themselves to imagine potentials. And when you're in a dark condition, that's often, often not <laughs> the way you feel. But when it comes to reminding you about the past experiences, that is quite often easy to achieve as a spirit. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's about reminding them the past experiences that they had in particular that reinforced the truth that mediumship is a reality and that the spirit communication that happened at those particular times were truthful and therefore were, and should be, remain as an established fact within the person. So I feel that's really, you know, the second thing, the establishment and the continued assistance of the development of their faith. So that's, that's number two. Number three is related to the humility issue, I feel. Now, 
as you know, the majority of uh, the, the effect of the lack of humility is that we can't receive yes and no answers. <laughs> now, um, so I want to just sort of talk about that a little bit, and that is, and um, when we lack humility, we often in so internally have an emotional set or a belief system. And remember, belief systems and emotional sets are the two major impediments to the growth of a medium on Earth. So, so with a belief system, we frequently have a lack of humility in the sense that we've imbibed a certain type of belief as a medium, and we don't want to give up that belief for, what, for some emotional reason. Now, many times the emotional reasons are connected to family, previous, our, our lifestyle, our you know, comforts, our addictions and so forth, that, that then causes us to establish a belief system. If a spirit could say that belief system is wrong, quite <laughs> definitely to the person, yes, and you could see that that would help the person on, as the medium greatly, wouldn't it? If they could just say, no, that is wrong. Or they could say, yes, that is right. <laughs> just, that, just that yes or no type of you know, answer to any question would greatly assist the person on earth to be able to confront their belief systems from an emotional perspective. Yes, but this is quite tricky, isn't it? Because yes. um, many spirits aren't aware of what is right and what is wrong. Yes. And so many of them do say that's wrong with... When it's right. When it's right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's right when it's wrong, yes. oftentimes, yes. And this is where, obviously, it behooves the spirit to make sure that when they're saying, no, that is definitely wrong, that, that they actually know and and have validation from a, maybe even a higher source than themselves, mm -hmm. that that is actually the case. Now, obviously, God is already trying through the mechanism of the conscience to share the truth with the medium yes. on earth. And the fact that God can't is an indication of the, of the medium's lack of humility in the first place, so that that's already the case. You know, God can is ease... It, is it the case, the lack of humility or the lack of introspection? Well, it's a, you could say it's a, a number of factors, really, because the lack of humility causes the lack of in, introspection. Mm -hmm. But also there is the underlying thing of, uh, of, of understanding possibilities as well that has an influence on the matter. When we see the potential of possibilities, we are more open to hearing about them. When, we don't, uh, when we're closed to the potential of possibility, we are less open to hearing about what could be shared. But that is still an aspect of humility. Why would we be closed to possibility if it weren't that we have a certain belief system that disables the concept of possibility? Certainly. So that, that is still an issue of humility. So, so when it comes to this third issue, which I feel is probably the most significant issue, because if we can establish, the, if we can allow the person to process emotionally when they are processing, and secondly, we can help them establish their faith. We've ironed out the things that uh, we can assist them with that, that basically can, we can assist them with while they're doing their thing. Mm -hmm. but, but the third thing requires trying to help them in some way obtain a sincere and practical desire to become more humble. Mm. And this is the area that needs the most work in terms of development of the person on earth is how to help them become more humble than they are. And what I'm suggesting is one way is to be able to be very definite with yes and no answers to their questions. Now, as you know, as a spirit, it's quite frequently a yes or no answer you often feel is not quite possible because there's so much information <laughs> attached mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. and and also, a yes or no answer requires a yes or no question. That's right. And, yes. and, and in the person who's a medium on earth frequently, they don't ask yes or no questions. Mm. And they are severely challenged by yes or no questions frequently because that would mean they will get a yes or no answer. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe, you know, and for many, they don't like the possibility of there being and know when they would like there to be a yes and, and vice versa. Yeah.
So I feel one way to help the medium in the early developmental stages of their mediumship is to get them used to desiring to know initially rudimentary answers that are that can be given yes or no mm -hmm. and help them develop their ability to actually uh, conceive yes or no questions and and this would so you so you're saying rather than conveying a whole wealth of information and facts facts really to have them seek just one fact uh, with with the um, intention that they would like yes or no. And uh, so you're really talking about encouraging, rather than our flow of information to the medium, you're speaking there, aren't you, about uh, somehow encouraging the medium to open up and ask their own questions, mm. which we can answer yes or no. Yes, and even to encourage the medium to uh, with the persons are sitting for, you know, the, to ask a yes to or ask no yes question. or no uh, questions as well, because this can also greatly help the medium establish yes or no answers. Now, so now can I give you some examples of how that can be done? For, for example, quite as you as you have rightly pointed out earlier, and um, there's a there's a problem, common problem on Earth that when a medium connects to a spirit the medium begins to believe that the spirit they're connected to is their previous life. Yes. Right. And all the medium would have to ask is, are you one of my previous lives? <laughs> and, get, and get a no mm -hmm. answer mm -hmm. to iron out that particular problem. Mm -hmm. And yet the medium never asks the question because the medium already presumes Mm, but that is an issue of their pre-existing belief system, so isn't it? So another question could be asked, is my current belief system about reincarnation true? Yes or no? Is my belief system about the afterlife currently true? Yes or no? Right. These kind of things would mean that oftentimes we might receive a no when we prefer to get a yes as a medium, but at least we would start, start now to establish further questions. Yes. Why, you know, it's because the next question could be asked as, how is it wrong? And then be a bit open to receiving some truth about how it's wrong. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But, but unless we can answer the rudimentary yes or no questions, it's highly unlikely we're going to ask the further elucidating questions. So it seems to me, in fact, that you, <laughs> both of you will be preparing the mediums on Earth. <laughs> And we will be prepared to, to work with them because it's, it, we are so accustomed to attempting to impress upon uh, our medium information in order to get their attention or to convey a message. But really here you're speaking about the seeking of the medium being almost a prerequisite before we provide a lot of information. I don't, I don't think so. I think, I think you can, you remember you've still got, I never... I'm not taking you away from the developmental phase of the medium here, are we? What we're saying is we still go through the providing evidentiary proofs. We still help them have their awakening. I see. I see. So th this is not just what can be done for people on, on, by people on earth. Mm -hmm. This is what can be done as a spirit, you know, helping a person on earth. Mm -hmm. so, so we still provide as a spirit this information, this help. The even physical evidence of our of our existence you know, all can be provided to the medium to establish points of faith. I see, I see. But during that phase, during that developmental phase, what I'm suggesting is, as a as a spirit, every time the medium asks a yes or no question, there needs to be, if you like, a reward where where they you know, get a yes or no answer <laughs> for their question that is, that is direct and truthful. And if they refuse that answer, that that answer is continued to be given in as many ways as possible. <laughs> does that make sense? It does. <laughs> Through all sorts of things you can show them to read and other things like that. Just help them get to the... To, to the that the answer is still no about that subject, or the answer is still yes about that subject, right? And the, and the reason why I'm suggesting as a spirit we can do this is because frequently you're with the person all the time. You can see, or, or a lot of the time, you can see the thoughts they're having 
and, and understand the emotions they're going through at the time. So there are times when you can get the answer of this yes or no question mm -hmm. through to the person that might not be available to a person who's speaking with them directly on earth. Yes. And, and so there are these moments, if you like, many of which uh, uh, occur, you know, a multitude of times during a day where you can still get that answer through to the person and, and, encourage, every, and encourage the asking of the questions that can establish a confrontation of belief systems. What, what I find with most uh, spirits when they're interacting with their people they are attempting to guide on earth as mediums is they're trying to nurse the medium through their belief systems all the time. <laughs> Do you follow me? And, and what I feel is probably better is if we can go through that rudimentary process still, which is the nursing stage, I suppose you could call it, you know, where, where really the medium is sort of on the breast, if you like, being suckled or nurtured. And then, and then get to the stage now where we go through this change of challenging the belief systems of the medium mm -hmm. and challenging the emotional condition of the medium. Because, because unless that phase is done, then the actual truth phase is not really going to be possible for a very long period of time. What I notice why spirits try to do when they're encouraging their medium on earth or a medium on earth to grow is they take them through this developmental process, you know, the first phase, if you like, of the development, this rudimentary proof or, or you know, basic physical evidence that, that the spirit world exists and we are having a conversation here and so forth. Mm -hmm. Have a, the medium has an awakening to that occurring. But then what they do is they shove them straight in the deep end, down this other end, of trying to transmit the actual information that they wanted to get across to, the, to, to Earth. Uh -huh. And they skip the mi middle part, which mm -hmm. is, how do I help this, this medium get over themselves enough mm -hmm. to receive that information that I want to be able to transmit to them? Yes, that is in essence our conundrum, but mm. you've given us some good uh, ideas now. Yeah, and I, I'm sure if you think about your experiences as well now, within in sort of the in, in the framework of that of that sort of three stages that we talked about, you can see this third stage, the very important stage of confronting the level of humility in the medium themselves, mm -hmm. is a, is a very important phase, and it's almost damaging to give them other information before that stage is complete enough. Because, because what will happen is they'll misinterpret the information being given. Yes. And then on through top of that, through their own belief systems and their own emotional injuries. And then on top of that, they will share that with other people, which the net result being that there is more confusion on the planet with regard to the truth, you know, that, that we want to share rather than less. So unless the medium goes through this developmental phase, this, this challenging developmental phase of challenging their belief systems and challenging their emotional condition, there's really no hope for the third, third phase to, to very, be very clear. And that's what I see happening most of the time when it comes to development of mediumship on Earth. There's a skipping over because the spirits are often impatient to deliver the information and they've already spent years developing, <laughs> usually years, developing the medium to the point mm -hmm. where they'll even listen to them in the first place. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes because of that, there's now the shift to trying to share all that information that they, they, the whole reason why the relationship was established in the first place was to share that information. But in the process of sharing that information, that's where I, I think from your own experience, you'll see that's where most of your frustrations start to rise because they start misinterpreting the information. Yeah. They start sharing untruth about the information and half the time you don't know whether you're doing good or, or, <laughs> or, uh, or causing more problems in the that's process. Right. Right? Right. And, and so without this middle, this sort of third stage of develop, this middle phase of, of going, okay, before this person is ready to receive all of the information, we really need to help them. And there's no harm in delivering information from that pool, if you like, where they can't interpret it, misinterpret it, or, or falsely present it. But before you can present everything to them, 
whatever will cause them to falsely present that information needs to be corrected. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and unless you help them go through that process of correcting it, which and the answer of helping them is to encouraging them to get more humble. And the way a person becomes more humble is by asking more yes or no questions. Mm -hmm. Because you end up, instead, instead of nursing their feelings about it, you're just saying, no, that's a truth or that's not a truth. And, and if you think about it, this method is the same method God's trying to use already through the mechanism of the conscience. Mm. It, the conscience is a mechanism that allows God to share truth and God wants the person to ask yes or no questions initially, obviously, so that he can give yes or no answers to establish the connection. So it's, it's a very similar process to what God is doing already. Yeah. Mm, it, it seems to me a lot that we must be um, practicing what you suggest for the mediums a lot ourselves. And this is where I can see I need to uh, really establish myself on this way to God. I think mm, perhaps mm. I've been dabbling a little. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure that I fully committed it to the humility that you're speaking of that mm. the medium must undertake. This issue of yes or no, you know, answers to questions or even asking questions that can give a yes or no answer. Um, like, a, a lot of times if you think about a child, that's what a child is doing, isn't it? Like, they're asking, mm. is this true or is that true? Is this troll or such troll? And, and, and that, that is the indication of the humility of the child. The child doesn't uh, try to ask complicated questions because the child understands at that stage that it doesn't really know many complicated questions at that stage, mm -hmm. right, to ask. And or, or many answers. Or many answers, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also because it hasn't built up a repository of, of, uh, of information inside of itself, it, it's not pre pre precluding potential questions via a source of knowledge that comes from within. So what it's doing instead is it... Is it it's just asking everything that it, that, that it conceives of in the moment, mm -hmm. if you like. And, and I suppose what I'm suggesting here with regard to helping mediums is that most mediums have a, after a while, after that initial, should we call it the initial nursing phase of their development, they, they get to the stage where they now think they're ready to go. And, and in that process, there is already now a lots of precluding beliefs and emotions that exist within them that stop them from asking yes or no questions because they don't necessarily uh, desire or, or are very afraid of the, the yes or no answers mm -hmm. <laughs> and where that may lead them in, in, in terms of their own development and their own life. And, and so what I'm really proposing in this middle phase of their development, you know, before you share all the information you really want to share with them is in this middle phase helping them understand and conceive that actually their 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 desire to get childlike and in terms of the way they approach their mediumship is far more important now than almost anything else with regard to their development mm. in their mediumship and if they do that they will get to the stage where even if they do have some precluding uh, beliefs, you know, uh, what, what you call uh, belief systems or emotions, that they can, can allow themselves to still receive more information that they actually personally disagree with. And, and, and that's really, in the end, the secret, isn't it, to get to the stage where we as individuals can, can actually hear the information that normally our emotions or our intellectual development or our prior belief systems would would basically prevent us from hearing but but we're willing to still hear it mm -hmm. and and if we get our mediums to that stage now there is a whole slew of information that could be presented to them without without them judging the information as to its validity or its truthfulness and this can greatly improve the ability of the medium to receive actual information and I don't, 
I know you've heard me refer to the pageant messages a bit and, and so forth. And, and during the channeling of the pageant messages, there were times when James Paget was actually channeling information that he personally didn't actually agree with. <laughs> um, and some of those times were even from spirits who were of a scientific bent, you know, who were, who were you know, trying to share that there was, a, in fact, at one point in time, uh, a, a, a human life on the poles. Uh, because of the way the earth, uh, you know, had a much better climate. And, and of course, Paget at that stage didn't really believe in any of that. You know, he just thought, you know, he's being lied to or, or, or you know, some truths were being misrepresented there. Or he mistrusted it uh, from the issue of faith. He mistrusted it. And yet, uh, and yet that information, a lot more of that kind of information could have been given if, if, it, if it'd been more open to hearing it, even though he personally may have, you know, thought that it may be not possible. Mm. Mm. So it's, really, it's a, it's a different kind of open-mindedness than the one that I referred to earlier in our discussion about mediums being fairly neutral and open to things. Here you're speaking about uh, a new level of openness that still has a seeking element to it or has a seeking element to it mm. rather than just sort of an openness to hearing things without allowing it to touch the individual's pre-existing belief systems which mm. is what we do encounter in many mediums on earth at the that's moment. right yeah and so because their pre-existing belief systems are not touched mm. and not confronted as a result of that their development is stagnate mm. and and because it's now stagnated there is a there is little hope of sharing actual you know the highest level of truths uh, from the spirit world that could be shared because of the impact the medium is going to have upon the sharing of that material. So um, so what I'm suggesting during this sort of middle phase of development is this confrontation of the medium's emotional belief systems and also their personal emotional condition. And, and doing it in such a way that encourages the medium every time they ask a yes or no question, they get yes or no answers. And as, as you know, as a spirit, it is quite easy to share yes or no, isn't it, mm -hmm. uh, with, with a medium, even through feelings sometimes, isn't mm -hmm. it? You can give them a, them a wonderful sort of a feeling uh, from yourself of love as they, uh, when the yes is there or... Or when they get it right, yes. when they get the answer, whether it's yes or no, right, you know, yeah. you, you can feel, you can give that confirmatory type of expression to them quite easily. And once they become used to that occurring, and, and that could be established during the early develop of the, the early parts of their development, now they'll start to trust, well, I, I, you know, I just asked a question and the answer was no to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, or the answer was yes to that. And, and also encouraging them through that process to ask personal questions. How, you know, like, is my personal development interfering with the channeling? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? You know, and, and being very definite and clear when it's a yes and bearing definite mm -hmm. clear when it's no. And if there is, a, you know, if, there, if it's in unclear, giving no answer whatsoever so that they're aware, well, I'm getting no answer whatsoever, so I'm just assuming that's unclear at this stage, so there must be more questions I can ask about that particular subject. And, and this process of encouragement of the spirit, of the person, through, through the spirit encouraging the person, can help the person get to the stage where they are really, really happy about asking yes or no questions and getting yes or no answers, um, and, and, and then having to use their imagination and their intellectual process to conceive of questions that, that can be easily answered. So, so for example, for many mediums, they, they might ask a question, for example, how old are you? Well, that could be anything, you know, well, from a spirit's perspective, they could be 5,000 years old. <laughs> it could be any number from zero to, you know, 150,000, couldn't it? And it's very hard to give an answer that's accurate there. But if they say, if they ask yes or no questions about age, are you older than 20? You know, that, that is easy to give a yes or no answer to. And so this is where we can encourage the spirits, even just through basic uh, con concepts, uh, encourage uh, spirits to actually deal with the mediums they're guiding mm. in this way. Then you, in that medial phase, you can get to the stage where now the medium is now going, well, yes, I have that belief, but I'm being told it's wrong. And, 
And while I have that belief and I do believe it, everyone I talk to in the spirit world is coming to me, is telling me it's wrong, you know, mm -hmm. every person I trust coming from, then, then I've probably got to consider that it might be wrong, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and then start asking questions about what is right rather than holding on to my belief system that is wrong. And I, and I feel as a spirit that can be easily achieved, mm. this middle phase. And I feel the reason why as a spirit it's often not done is because the spirit is afraid of losing the medium and the connection with the medium during that phase. And therefore afraid, uh, really afraid that they're never going to be able to share this additional truth that they really want to share. And, and so some of that is to do with the spirit's fear about the fact that they've invested all of this time and energy in developing the medium only to find during this phase that the medium runs away from the process. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. No, that's very clear. And some very useful things that we can now go away and experiment from our end. Mm. Yeah, I'd be very interested to see how it goes in this transition between the yes or no, you know, the yes mm -hmm. or no question transition. Um, because um, obviously... Because we're more in the face of the person, and even as a spirit, you know, you are more in the face of a person than God is in, in, yes. in, in some regards. To, for a person to receive God, information of God, they've got to be quite humble, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when they have quite rigid uh, feelings. But when you're in the face of a person, you can say, no, that's wrong, even when the person <laughs> believes they're right, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do that a, a lot on earth. That's why there's advantages of living here, obviously. But you can also do that as a spirit quite a lot. So... Uh, and you can do it with each other as spirits as well, obviously, but mm -hmm. you can do that with spirit, you know, between the spirit and the medium as well. And so in some ways you can say yes or no to a person, even when, we, when that person can't clearly receive from God the mm -hmm. yes or no because of their lack of, you know, desire for that relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think the process would be interesting if that happened. Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we're going to set to work. Yeah, yeah, I'd be interested to see how it goes and, and maybe if you could come back at some point and we talk about how that process went in yes. terms of breaking through that, you know, those fundamental problems that most mediums on earth face regarding the humility side of their, of their development. Yeah. Yes, we will continue to develop our own humility while we work with, spirit, with mediums on earth. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's yeah. Been really yeah. thrilling, really. Yeah, as you know, we're very keen on seeing the, uh, uh, you know, there being a large improvement mm. with the mediumship on the planet. Um, it has the power to uh, change, significantly change uh, it, it, everyone's life on earth, actually, not, mm. not just individuals, whole societies of, mm. of uh, you know, the way we live in society, mm. it has the power to change all of that, given the fact that most society lives the way it does now because of this problem of a lack of faith yes. in the spirit world. Yes, mm. yes, it's very evident. Mm. 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 Yes, well, uh, we would love to return. In yeah. fact, you, yeah. you, you'll be hard pushed to keep us away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be, uh, as you know, with a lot of the things that I've been doing with mediums, uh, or, you know, you might have observed, for those of you who might have been around earlier, you know, over the last 20 years or so, um, oftentimes I've encouraged them to go down this yes or no road only to, uh, to have them become so frightened of the process that, uh, mm. that they run away. Mm. And, yet, and yet it's been some pretty powerful channeling. I remember one in particular where this lady in the US was channeling what she believed to be the Apostle uh, Peter and and Paul, and, um, and she wasn't channeling those two people. But, but we went through this exchange of information back and forth with each other uh, where I got her to ask a series of questions, direct questions to these particular spirits who I knew weren't necessarily misrepresenting themselves, mm -hmm. but who were okay with the misrepresentation mm -hmm. that she'd interpreted her assumptions. Her assumptions mm -hmm. in order to maintain the connection. And, uh, and once we confronted that whole dynamic, and she, she, within, a, within a month, she, she, she realised that they weren't who, they were, who she thought they were claiming, which mm -hmm. they, 
had actually never claimed, mm. but she had thought they were that, and so she thought they claimed it. But but as a result of that, she got she wasn't willing to go through this phase of truth, you know, mm. and uh, and I never heard from her again, unfortunately, mm. and and. And this is often the case, you know, that you, you take a person through that phase of truth. If they get through that phase of truth, then the sky's the limit, really, as the saying mm-hmm. goes, with mm-hmm. regard to the further truth that can be shared. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Yes. Well, it's, a, it's an experiment for us. Yeah. yeah. Thank so you for I, I enjoy seeing how the experiment goes. <laughs> <laughs> It's been lovely talking to you, so Gladys, and uh, I know Mary's tired now, so we need to we need to break away. Um, but uh, I'm going to continue reading your book and seeing, <laughs> get to know you a bit better through the through the book. <laughs> lovely, thank you. <laughs> okay, bye for now. Bye for now. Well, I, I don't think we need to give too much explanation about that. That was fairly clear, I feel, to everyone what the discussion was about there, and. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see from a spirit's perspective uh, what the experiment, how the experiment goes, mm. um, and also see what mediums, uh, you know, come about from engaging that experiment over the coming years, you know. But uh, as you and I know, we've tried to do that in the past, haven't we, with different mediums, and yeah. they've always got to that truth phase and had had a lot of difficulty. Yeah, mm. there's a lot of emotions I think get brought up. Yeah, for the medium, for the medium. at that point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and then they sort of. Instead of going through it in a sincere way, they just want their addictions back frequently, don't they? Mm-hmm. They want, they still want to be honoured for their mediumship, even though you're now demonstrating to them that it's not as clear as it possibly could be, and yes, and that, and then of course they don't have any future. Uh, they instead of going, oh well, I'll just fix that problem. Yeah, they go, oh, I'm just going to give up and and or go back to the way I used to do it. Yeah, and, and I think it can challenge a, a medium's faith as well in mm. their in their capacity to channel. If you've gotten something wrong, I know what it's like. You feel like, oh well, if you if you're prone to that kind of, if, there's two things. It seems like if you're quite prone to self criticism and self doubt. Well, I wouldn't call it self criticism. I'd probably call it self attack. Yeah. See, you, from from God's perspective, you're allowed to make mistakes. Mm. You know, and mediumship is a, is such that because there's so many. Uh, there's so much opposition to it on earth that naturally you're going to have some emotions about it. Yeah. And you're allowed to make mistakes during it. It's not, it's not like it's a, uh, you know, you have to be perfect at it from the beginning. Mm. It's funny, it's funny the approach that people have to spiritual matters at, for, for my, when I look at things because it, it's like when we approach like going to play tennis or something like that, you know, some physical task, mm-hmm. we realise that there's always going to be a time of learning mm. where we get things wrong and we don't do it really good. And, but, but because we enjoy it, it yeah. drives us to continue doing it. Yeah. And after a while, we enjoy it and our skill level will improve and our abilities improve. And we get to the point where we're quite good at it. And in some cases, people, you know, can become professionals with it, you know, because yeah. they're so good at it. And... That's a process that mm. people go through with m- most naturally on mm. earth with regard to physical things, and yet we don't apply the same process emotionally or spiritually. Mm. It's, a, it's like we have to get everything right emotionally, and we have to get everything right spiritually, and you don't. Mm. You know, there are times emotionally when you're going to be angry, even though it's not good to be angry mm-hmm. all the time. You're going to have to go through anger because you, anger is an emotion. You have to experience it. You've got to find out why, what's driving it. And, and the same applies with other uh, spiritual things, spiritual truths, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You, you, it's a developing thing where you start off uh, with a very rudimentary understanding, and then as you develop, 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 you gain more and more knowledge and understanding. We've got to get used to applying that process to ourselves, mm. and we've got to get used to saying, "I'm going to make mistakes, mm-hmm. and it's okay." Mm-hmm. And the problem, and for most of us, the problem is it was never okay as a child. Mm to make certain kinds of mistakes. Yeah. As a child, when we learnt to walk, we were okay, we were allowed to fall over, we were allowed to make a physical mistake. Mm-hmm. And so naturally, when we're learning physical processes now, we're allowed to make mistakes. So, so if we're learning tennis, we're allowed to make some mistakes. But when it comes to the emotional side of things in our childhood, frequently we were not allowed to make any mistake. And frequently, what we classified as mistakes were a large variety of you know, all sorts of what I would classify as contrary information. Yes. 
And and so on one sister one on one day, mummy said you're not allowed to make that mistake emotionally. The next day she wanted you to. You know, like yeah. one day she didn't want you to lie to her, the next day she wanted you to lie to your neighbour. You know what I mean? Like okay. how confusing is that? So so as a child we learn that emotional and spiritual mistakes are sort of the way we come to see them is the worst mm -hmm. that we can do. Mm -hmm. And as a result with that, we have little tolerance for them. Yeah. But we need to gain more tolerance for them. Hey? And, yeah. and I feel with this mediumship uh, thing, that's a very critical thing. You've got to be tolerant of the mistakes and allowing of the mistakes during the developmental Mm. At, at all times, really, because mm. you, you could be very well developed as a medium and still be making mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, um, you yeah, know, it's something it, that needs to be addressed. It's, I, guess it's, um, I guess it's also such a highly emotional topic for people who are listening to mediumship as well, and that's why it becomes, for the listener as well as the medium, it can become quite a... a um, you know, there's all that kind of. It's not okay to make a mistake. It's not because people are so afraid of being drawn in or lied to, or you know, there's no faith in the goodness of the person who's doing the mediumship most times, or those kinds of. This well, is sometimes very, there's far too much faith in. The yeah, of yeah, the that's right. It's, it's sometimes just, it's yeah. But it, and but all of that does depend upon our own condition, doesn't it? If mm -hmm. we will frequently accept it. Unless we can feel the condition of another person, we're going to trust people that shouldn't be trusted mm -hmm. or not trust people that should be trusted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, frequently that's the case, isn't it? So, yeah. it, again, it does develop, de depend a lot on our personal humility. So when we go to a medium, mm -hmm. instead of putting all this pressure on them to get everything right, yeah. we need to listen to what they say and then connect to uh, our own spirit friends mm -hmm. and determine whether actually... You know, through yes or no, again, through yes or no questions, we can determine what, was everything being said to me actually right? Mm. Was it actually true? Mm. Or is it just misleading for some reason? And there are many people who are willing to mislead us, that is true. Mm. But, but uh, and there are many very dark mediums who are willing to mislead people on the earth, and that is also true. Mm -hmm. But, you know, unless we go through this process of experimentation, we will not be able to determine who they are yeah. and also who has a far higher ideal and greater sincerity. Yeah. 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 Mm. <laughs> All right. Well, we'd like to thank you guys for listening into our conversation today. Hopefully you've learned something about how it feels from a medium's, a spirit's perspective when they're trying to <laughs> educate a medium to, to connect to the truths that they'd like to share. And if any of you are mediums out there, then hopefully it's been a benefit to you, the conversation we've had with um, Gladys, Gladys, of Gladys yeah, um, uh, that we just had with her regarding wanting to help uh, pe people who are mediums on earth to share more truth. So, mm. so hopefully you've enjoyed that conversation and we'll see you another time.